I'm in the garage of many things and uh, currently building a new bed for my um, leisure power batteries. Um, this is the old frame and originally this had, uh, well, it's fitted in the cockpit lockers. Um, originally that was the starter battery, went here and there was a little 85 amp hour battery which went there um, which wasn't really sufficient enough for my power needs that there is an absolute monster it's huge it's got enough amp hours or cc whatever that is um to um actually where is it oh there it is cca um all those electricians out there will probably know exactly what cca is um but that is the sort of amount of immediate amps delivered from the battery for startup so it's a it's a good start it's a good starting battery uh giving 740 ccas for the uh, volvo penta so i'll keep that um i have had that on charge um so i will keep that i'm going to actually modify this so it can go back in the original place um but the new batteries are gonna be fitted actually inboard they're gonna go in the cabin because space in that locker is very very limited um and so having two 130 amp uh, hour batteries is going to be a bit of a squeeze and i really don't want to fill it up if i can help it well it's coming along um it's a lot easier working with 18 mil ply when you're screwing all these panels in it's a lot stronger as well um so i've just measured up a little bit higher than the actual battery um uh, batteries i've got so i've just cut these little squares out just to run the cables between the two i've just got to do the sides got a few more sides to do and then just do the top looking too bad at the minute okay so that's the battery box just making some cable off uh for the new battery tie-in just putting some heat shrink on at the minute I haven't gone for tins this time around because it was super expensive and uh, I mean this is all going to be kept indoors anyway um, if it does start to corrode I'll uh, I'll just replace it I think the cost of tin cable at the minute is absolutely insane obviously if it's anything to do with the mast um, navigation small bore stuff then uh, the smaller wiring kind of needs to be tin but I mean this heavier gauge stuff I'm just keeping this um, as copper for a while I'll just keep an eye on it Um, so essentially what's going to happen, uh, or what my plan is, to install this breaker as a 150 amp breaker as close as to the battery bank as possible, probably mount it on the side here. Uh, yeah, I've got these, these jumper leads for connection uh, onto the batteries and then this extra section is going to come off the positive and then straight into that breaker before it goes off to the main panel uh, or the main switch if you like. I'm just trying to sort my cover out it's uh it was sort of sagging big time this side i'm just trying to create a bit of a slope so the water doesn't keep building up on it so i've gone for the clipper bm1 i think these are great little units um very compact and they also do um, an auxiliary battery so you can switch over quite easily and um, the only thing is these are slightly larger than some of the others um but i've got plenty of space i can put them um I was thinking like on here and this panel here or maybe even under the switches here just next to the galley but um yeah we'll have to have a little play around with that um first things first i've got to try and figure out where i'm going to put my new battery set um First thinking is down there and build a shelf uh, over the top of it. And the second one is uh, down in one of these lockers here underneath the underneath the boards. I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit. Just had the heater on a little, uh, just ticking over a little oil radiator just um, to keep some of the condensation off. It's doing really well. So I'll just put that in there and I kind of like the position of that in there. The only thing is this wall is not particularly strong but that bulkhead definitely is this takes up quite a lot of space in here so I'm I might just experiment with a couple of other options first but 
so far that's probably the best one so i've just uh positioned these braces on the either side because the box isn't actually wide enough and i've cut these timbers out i'm just gonna put that in there so that's the bed for the box and And that will now fit in there. Okay, so that's in position. Uh, I've just got that sort of set so that I can withdraw the batteries out. So that is nicely set up right next to the switch panel uh, where the master switches are. So um, before I screw that down, uh, I'm just going to put the batteries in um, and just check the cabling routing just to make sure that there's no major issues. There shouldn't be, but um, yeah, it's just worth checking anyway. So when it comes to battery connectors, you've got, or clips, you've got a, a huge range on the market. Um, I've just used these reasonably sort of standard uh, connectors with the wing nuts on top of a M8 bolt with a spring washer to keep the cable secure. Um, I was only having sort of one main cable off each of them. So, But if you've got a smaller boat, um, you can make life a lot easier instead of having or buying all the buzz bars and all that stuff to connect your circuits individual circuits off you can buy the battery clips with it's like a little plastic cover over the top built in and then like bolts or screws to connect your cables direct off with a fuse and it just saves you having to you know find a place for a you know positive and negative buzz bar and all that you know fuse fuse box all that sort of stuff i'm just using my phone because there's no light on a gopro Unbelievable for the amount they pay for it. But there we go. Um, that is the batteries in position. Put the positives at the back, I think. Uh, just cut a little hole out here so it's keeping everything uh, for keeping everything inside the box. So um, yeah, there we go. Now what I am going to do, um, obviously I will I will put a cover on top of this. Um, just haven't got around to it yet. Um, just to keep everything inside, and that will be excellent so now i need to like bloody lunatic um now i need to get this cabling sorted um as i mentioned i'm right next to where the panel is so we'll just get the cables in um and into the switch so just put my breaker up there uh, i thought it was the best place because i can bring the cable right over the top and into the um the switch panel uh and that's right next to the battery bank as well. I'm trying to keep the cables out of view as much as possible because um, they are a bit ugly. So, uh, yeah, so that's sort of work on the positive side of things. Um, and that uh, essentially comes out over the top there and will go straight into, I think it's that one or that one. One of these is the... Um, is the isolator for the starter battery and the other ones for the leisure battery and at the minute you've got these um like midi fuses i call them i think yeah these essentially are going to come out and oh my god it's a 200 so a bit of an issue here really because the protection on these is over the rating of the cable so um yeah another finding um i think the cable's about 170 amp so essentially it would draw over the rating of the cable until that popped. So this is, these are overrated. Overrated uh, by the look of things. Anyway, what's that one there? That's another 200. It's not good. So I've got this little Red Wolf um, circuit breaker. Uh, this is 150 amp. Uh, so I'm just uh, setting up my positive into the battery line connection um, and then I'll put that probably next to the uh, 240 volt fuse board I think um, instead of putting it in there so yeah it's quite nice um, if you do trip um, then it's just an easy switch to, to reset so this is why I haven't painted the deck yet on that
So having to do this a long way uh, with a fire lighter, which took me ages, but um, thankfully I'd made both most of the uh, terminations off with the heat gun at home, um, of which I'd left uh, in the garage. So yeah, anyway, this is the positive cable to connect from the uh, MCB breaker to the main switch, leisure switch. Not what I typically use, but never mind. Right. Um, I've now routed the um, positive feed to the switch, which is now going in there. I had to go into that fuse because the um, actual fixing holes for the uh, termina terminations I've got are the uh, are the wrong size. This is a big chunky thing, so I've just had to use going on the um, on the 200 amp fuse. It doesn't matter because too much because I've now got a 170 sorry a 150 uh, manual breaker there so um, that actually renders that useless I'm simply using that as a as a means of connecting onto the main battery um, switch so just run that a little bit neater this I want to try and tidy up this a little bit because it's just hanging here and it really isn't great at all this is actually the positive from where did that come? So that was what I removed off that. So what I'm going to do, I think, is use this as the negative feed off that dual bank and have it join the uh, the negative off the crank because that's uh, sort of close to where it is at the minute. So, um, I mean, essentially all the ground goes back down to that fixing point on the, um, on the engine. So before I start doing anything with the negative feed, I've need to now look at the uh well connecting up the shunt for my voltage indicator which um is that um set of drawings here so got the shunt needs to be off the negative so here's the cable um that little fuse there obviously we need some power to supply this display so this is the cable supply cable for it this is the fuse the protector fuse for it um, which I could put on the other side of that um, switch ideally because um, we don't want it powered up all the time good oh excellent right that should be a bit easier now so white and what is this white and black cable and this diddy little screw. And then we have the yellow core, and that's on the other side. Ah, oh, I can't see because the camera's in the way. That's hilarious, isn't it? Doing a video, and I can't actually see what I'm doing. Preferably, that's going to go here. I can see what's going on then. I can check the fittings, etc. Uh, quite easily um, and likewise the, the battery uh, links and all the terminations and stuff so I think I'll position that shunt and then I'll connect the little cable up or the line of cable that comes with it and then I'll run it round to the um, back of the display which is going to go there I'll just make a mark on the wall there hopefully that's reasonably straight although it doesn't look like it too well um, I'm just going to cut this out with my thingy. There we go. Right, that was pretty smoky. Right, that's out. Put you in there. Right, pretty messy, but we're there. And that fits nicely there. No, I just need to hoover all that crap up and uh, quite like it there actually. So that's in. I've just got to connect up the cables, uh, which I'll do just before I leave off. Um, I do need to get a second connector there, uh, just some finishing up work. I didn't have another connector. I didn't have one that size either, but that's only going to go in. Um, I think what I'm going to do as well is uh, just put... A, um, like a barrier or something like a piece of wood or something to stop those uh, negatives flying over that side in the event that they did they do sort of um, become disconnected but it's yeah it's all kept on sort of short kind of lengths of cable if you like so that, uh, that should be okay so I've just been setting this up uh, uh, 
do this by um oh what is it press illuminate and then i've set my um total amp hour to the battery and then you set your like temperature of the battery and then and then you start switching on like some of the loads and stuff and it like basically it's intelligent to uh loads up how much sort of load you've got on the on the battery don't know how it does it some clever stuff but what is interesting is that um most of uh, what i've got on at the minute is sort of low power led sort of stuff my nav lights sale nav lights at the top i've just switched them on they're leds but if you look at the amps and then you um i'll, I'll just turn on my my engine nav lights so these are the ones that are um what well, uh the sort of deck lights and then the steaming lights so the steaming light is led um and the deck lights port and starboard and the stern light on the rail are all filament lamps i think so i just flick that on and you'll see how much of a difference that is so that's like that's insane <laughs> i mean it's like two and a half about two and a half amps 2.6 that's mad i'm definitely changing them out for leds that's a huge amount of power. Another good day. Um, I've just been tidying up some of the bits and pieces that I have been uh, working on uh, around the battery. Um, all the uh, sort of lugs and stuff are on the negative side now. Um, and I've also uh, properly um, used soldered joints for um, the connection to the voltage indicator. Um, also, just swing this around a bit. Um, I've installed a um fuel gauge and i've just been uh, running the power up for that it's um i've just been testing it at the minute but um yeah the uh, i've just got like a switch in there that's um that's all been tested and then uh, i need a 52 mil holes to go in now i think i'm gonna put it on the side here um and then uh yeah so uh, i've got its own switch there because i don't want it on all the time it's really just a blip just to check the the um you know the diesel level in the tank um, without me having to open up that massive hatch like i had to before got the starter cable connected to the starter battery now um which is um quite handy to have so i've now got sight on um the condition of the starter battery yeah all going quite well to be honest um i thought these jobs would take a lot longer but actually um you sort of like work steadily towards it and make sure everything is um done properly uh, I think that's the main thing with the electric stuff is just making sure that all your connections are decent and um, you know are insulated. I've got these uh, the uh, the lug insulators are really they've made it look really really smart. I think um, so. Yeah. Anyway, that's that done. Um, the next job is going to be the exhaust hose, getting that all sorted out. And I've also I also need a new bolt for the tiller um, uh, sort of uh, manifold, if you like, onto the to the rudder. Um, so yeah, there's a few bits and pieces uh, I need to sort out. Uh, after the exhaust is done, I am going to get stuck into the deck. I think um, enough's enough now with all the little jobs. Um, yeah, I'd be keen to uh, get that done, or at least started. So here is the gooseneck of my boom, and that there is what we're talking about. Nice crack along there. Right. 